Hi, this is Heather Straczynski and Danielle Rodriguez. And this is another episode of Real Talk. A misconception. It's a it's a big misconception. Yes. They go, are you a listing agent? We only want to work with the listing agent because we don't have an agent and we want to get a better deal because they won't have to pay our side. It is a misconception that you're necessarily going to save money if you don't have an agent and you call the seller's agent directly. Right. It's. I think that's a lot of people think that they're like, okay, they don't have to pay my side. Let's say it's a three hundred three hundred thousand dollar house. They're getting paid three percent. I'm going to save them nine thousand, so I want nine thousand off the house. Right. That doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work <laughs> that way. First of all, the commission. It's a great thought. It, it is a good thought, yeah. and it makes sense as to why people think that. Right, but it doesn't work that way. But the commission is no um, is it's negotiated preset. Yes, with the company. Right. So that's true because the agent really exactly the agent can't act without the broker approving. Exactly. So they set that. So the for instance, Roundtable Realty has set up six percent is being paid. 3% to the buyer's agent, 3% to the seller's agent, and this is just examples. If you walk in without an agent, guess who your agent is? The selling agent. So they are making 6%. Both sides of the deal. <laughs> They're not just making the seller right. side. Even though you say no one's representing you, someone Somebody is. is going to represent <laughs> you. Yeah, it really just depends on the relationship they have with you. Correct. So the seller's agent is actually at that point going to make both sides of the right. deal and they are going to make a double commission. So it's not And they'll be doing the money. work of both sides they as will. well. Because it's you not know, like they're just not doing anything. Right. I mean, they are representing the seller, but then, you know, there are things that the buyer needs to do and have and sign and get together and information and inspections right. and stuff. And like I said, it, it really depends on the relationship that the agent is going to have with you. That being said, like we've said before, you know, a single agent, mm -hmm. transaction agent, no broker relationship. These are things that, you know, you can Google. We are going to do another video on it. Look for that one. Because it comes up a lot and it's very important. Yep. Um, but depending on their relationship with the buyer, you know, that's going to determine how much they're going to help them because by law, they can only do so much. Right. As a buyer, if you're saying, okay, I'm going to save money because I don't have an agent. Okay. So let's go through a couple of things. Do you know how many days you have for inspections? Do you know how many days that you can, uh, request repairs? Yes. Are you supposed to be shopping for insurance also? Why should you shop for insurance? What are the things that could come up if you don't yeah. shop for insurance? What happens if it's day 11? When are you supposed to 10? get a lender? When are you supposed to get approved for a lender? Yeah. What about your loan um, application? When is that due? If you have no one guiding you through any of this, how many days before closing are you supposed to get the documents to look over to make sure that they're correct. Who holds your binder? How much is your binder? How much should your binder be? Who should hold your binder? <laughs> Who should? That's that's a good word, should. Right. Who determines who gets the binder if something happens? So, yeah, it would really behoove you <laughs> have an have agent. representation. Have representation, yeah. Don't walk in thinking you're just gonna save money by not having an agent. You're gonna lose a lot more Right. by not having an agent than you would save. Right. I would want representation no matter what I was buying and from who. Right. Whom. Whom? And we've had this happen <laughs> where we had a client who asked to help her buy a house and she knew what house she wanted to buy and it was a neighbor's and we kind of negotiated back and forth. The neighbor was putting that house up for sale. Then um, they decided it was easier to cut the agents out of the deal. And the friend went upon herself to work with this neighbor. And when it came down to the end, she didn't buy the house. The deal she, didn't happen. Yep. She lost a lot of money and then was calling us for advice and wanted us to tell her how, what to do and how to do it. And at that point, we, we can't, can't do anything. There are certain laws and certain rules and certain restrictions put into place. Right. And that um, she found, I think, out the hard way. And we don't want that to happen. It's a big purchase. There are, you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table there. So it's you want the to make to cut sure. Corners. No. I don't think you'd go on a murder trial without an, an, an attorney. attorney. <laughs> don't so, do that either though. Yeah. You want a real estate agent representing you and you're not going to save the money you think exactly. you're going to save. All right. Well, this was another fantastic episode of Real Talk. Be sure to check us out on YouTube. Check out our other videos mm -hmm. and we'll see you next time.